The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. This is October the 2nd. My pleasure to be here. Dow's down 106. S&P's down 10. Comp Index is down 15. Um, gold is up. Very sharply, gold is up thirty well, thirty three dollars, even sharper than sharply. At thirteen nineteen, silver's up seventy cents at twenty one eighty. You got crude oil up a little bit, but bonds are up twenty seven thirty seconds as well. One thirty three and twenty seven thirty seconds. Dollars down thirty two seconds and had a couple of questions in the den. I'm gonna get to them right away. That's why I want to get these numbers out the way. Couple of things I just want to clarify here. Uh, first of all, let me just quickly show you, for those of you who are looking at uh, Tiger TV, and you are looking at, here we go, da -da -da, click, and we're on our way. Uh, looking at the ESZ-130, the December contract, the, the give back of yesterday's gains was really important as far as I'm concerned because it was an artificial move to the upside, number one. Number two is in the 120-minute chart, we're at a very important level right now. Why? <clears throat> because the nine-period exponential moving average, which is at 1681 on the E-minis, with a low today of 16.73, I said to my subscribers in my opening call, I always give the 120-minute chart and daily chart. I show them. I don't. I don't give buys or sell signals. I explain. I just show the, the Chapman Wave methodology as it's working. I give the parameters and I say what to look for. And I said the 16.73 to 71 area is really quite critical, because if it breaks under that, then we're going down to the 16.66s. That to me is what you need to really focus on that volatility index and a couple of other little things that we will look at in a moment one most important ingredient that I'm looking for is in my analysis I discussed yesterday the different indices and when I got to the <clears throat> the rut the Russell 2000 I said it's interesting that the Russell 2000 index that's the core the index itself had in fact uh, begun a leg D to the upside. It went to a slightly higher high today, so it extends that D. Yesterday was 1087.30, today is 1087.39. Nine cents, big deal? Yes, a big deal, because it extends the daily chart to leg D with a MACD at 85%. That's good. And the, the sorry, the MACD is still very strong, making it an M formation. And the stochastics at 85%. But it is way lower than it was even back at the um, high of going to the September the 13th, going to the peak B high of the uh, 19th, etc. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying it's a divergence I've got to respect, number one. Number two is in the weekly chart, I've got this as a leg F. Now, it's, I've got numerous different letters in all the different I, I it drives me nuts when every once in a while that happens I love like I did I had that beautiful synchronicity for the August 2nd high don't have it here at all in letters that is so now let's look at this so this is the the, the Russell 2000 leg E up in the monthly going just above the up the very long term up channel sorry the up track inside track it's a rising wedge. It's an inside track. As normally the sell zone, it's gone above it. Got to respect that because it's the month of October, and we've broken out to a new all-time, whoops, a new all-time high in the Russell 2000. So that says to me, it's just a heads up to say, be a little careful here because you have been the leading uh, index, and you're just beginning to show signs internally through... Uh, the unbalanced volume, the relative strength index, you are just saying, watch out, because I might be running out of steam, but I haven't yet given that signal. Okay? Now look at this. The IWM, this is why I want you to bring it up immediately today. IWM is in leg C officially, <clears throat> but there were two parallel highs. On the 16th, there was a high of 106.08. And on the 17th, there was a parallel high of 106.08, and within two bars, this is part of the Chapman Wave alternate count methodology, you only use it when there is justification. 
You cannot arbitrarily just say, oh, I'm going to use a phantom peak. No. A phantom peak has to be recognized. I always change the color. In fact, I should change the color. That's, that is definitely a, a blue A. That's a, a, a gray B. So that's C and D, based only on that B. Theoretically, this should be peak C. It says that in this particular instance, I have to acknowledge that the primary uh, core indicator has to be the root position because that's from which everything else is based. When I go to the Dow, the diamonds might not give exactly the same count, but the Dow is the one that counts except in only one instance historically. And that's in the move that I call the Chapman Wave Stork Leg Formation. It's not here at this particular time. Yeah, there's a case that it could be it could be made here, but I'm just not going to include it right now. I just don't see the necessity for it. So I'm saying, in this particular instance, I'm looking at the methodology functioning as it should, and it says the root position is core. Look at your uh, subsidiary. This is the ETF and see if there's any way that there was something that was missed. And the only thing that is missed is that there was a, 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 an exact parallel high. So what I'm going to do is type in here so that we can see it. Chapman Wave, Fan, Phantom, whoops, you got to spell it right. Fan, Tom, Peak, B. And if there's another high after this, it gets era era erased, and I move everything up, and the new one becomes the the the, the, uh, the requisite peak D. Could happen. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying right now, I'm I'm looking for things to be in sync. So I wanted to bring it up right right away, part of the Chapman Wave methodology, and so far the 120 minute chart has gone to peak. Well, that was an A. This is. Either F G or A B, and, and I, I, I'm sorry, F F G or G slash C. So I don't have to do anything now. Stochastics at 88 percent, MACD is still good. Let it play out. Let's see what happens. Since we don't have a position in this, all I need to say is let's just wait. Let's just wait and see what happens. Um, now let's just run all these other 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 uh, indexes. Uh, INDU. Here we go. So the Dow, this is very poor action. Yesterday's action in the Dow, even with that loss, emotionally swept the rumor mongering uh, rally towards the end, uh, which unfortunately took us out of our fabulous short that we had. Uh, but we jumped right back in this morning. Will it, will it hold through the day? I don't know. No, but we got back in. Anyway, so look at this. If you're looking at the Dow, look at the patterns that have evolved. And I say markets tell us by their pattern formation. Uh, actually, it'll be a little quicker for me to go to the front page here and go to this one. Oh, isn't that interesting? Um, this is leg C to the downside. And now this is what I've drawn in. This is this is what I said. My subscribers just one little paragraph. There's a whole bunch that goes on with this chart as well, and I show what 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 was happening. I'm not, and I said, is the Dow lagging because it's leading, or is it lagging just because it's lagging? It's going to have to pay uh, play catch up. And today is essentially a very important session for a number of reasons, and it's going to tell us by the end of the day, regardless of any interviews that are coming up uh, with a president. Uh, it just doesn't matter. This. The market is the the price point of human emotion, and we will tell at the end of the day where it closes. Now, I'm going to do this. I'm going to squash this a little bit so the lettering will be missing. It's a little there. Now, you see this particular pattern that started off. The pattern that I call in the, in the Chapman Wave methodology, the, the, the double top dreaded H pattern, uh, I'm sorry, the double top, Drop bucket pattern looks like a backhoe that lifts up. There's the arm, and then the backhoe bucket, and then it just drops all the all the dirt. And that's exactly what happens. So you get this double top formation, cup formation, peak in on May the 22nd in the Dow. Plummets down, doesn't plummet. It goes down to 
um, 14,551 on the 24th of June. And then it goes back in almost an exact price time match and then makes a little cup formation at the top like a cup and handle. One of my least favorite patterns because it invariably fails. Uh, when it succeeds, that is powerful. Majority of the time in my work, I find that it fails. The cup, cup and ladle is the most powerful. Again, we get a big cup formation. And it goes from the left side to the right side, almost to the, within within one bar. It overlaps. It, it comes in above 15,658. Uh, within one bar, and goes to 15,709. So here's a cup formation. There's a double cup formation. And now what are we doing? There's a potential for yet another cup formation. But wait a minute. This is not quite the same. Why? <clears throat> Because the stochastic's already under 20% and the MACD is just now starting to open up between the fast-moving average and the slow-moving average. That says, on a purely technical basis, be aware that with the MACD only narrowly open like that, the fast-moving average below the slow-moving average, if there is a rally and that 15,244 nine-period exponential moving average that was fantastic support, now is tremendous resistance, is pierced by Friday, let's say, I don't care what the news, whatever the news is, then I have to say to myself, aha, let's see, does it match any of the other patterns? Well, it does match that whole pattern back in June where we went bouncing along from the H to the M pattern and then it broke down. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying the Dow, now I'm going to open this po 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 uh, pattern up and I'm going to say the Dow has the potential to make yet another cup formation. It also has the potential to use this dashed line to the downside to make a low on the 8th of October, not a low, but get close to testing the 14,760 level if there are failures. And if you remember, we were counting the bars on the upside and then on the downside, and in this particular instance, from the high of the 2nd of August, there were nine sessions, and the ninth one was this ugly candle. The tenth one was not, a, not quite a doji, but a small candle with a, a wide body, but a small, can, a small wick on either side. And now what we've done is this is the ninth candle, and here's the tenth candle. So this tenth candle is going to tell me, are we replicating the down move in time and somewhat in price? from the slide from August? Or is there going to be something different? Is there going to be a sudden saving of this particular index? Now let's go to something else. Let's go back to uh, this chart here. And I, what I was talking about was, I put the, I don't want to leave it here. This is the, this is the bar that we're looking at. You see the stochastic where it is? 20, no, it was 19%, now it's at, at 20%. And the MACD, look what happened on the uh, 10th bar. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10th bar, right there. And that MACD. So this is the pattern. Look, the MACD was way wider. I'll be back with continuous analysis. 877-927-6648. Love to get a call from you. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. For your viewing pleasure, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. We're back. I want you to do just something. I'm going to get it. Get, I'm not doing anything on the charts right this moment. We've got a whole bunch of questions. I will spend the very next block on, the, on all, all those questions in the den, etc., etc. Now, let me just quickly do this. Look, I've loved using my Chapman wave to do like a weather or all sorts of things. When I see a chart, I count waves. I know a lot of you have begun doing it for many years. You've been doing it, some of you, but some of you have just begun doing it. Look at this. I don't know where this chart started from. This is the initiated foreclosures from the Boston Globe today. Here's the, the red one is the completed one. If you count... I. I have to exclude this one here, although I'm, I'm anticipating from what I see that this is a top and that's peak A, B, C, D. So this is the initiated foreclosures. If you take this gray line, it goes A, peak B, peak C, peak D. They put the down arrow, not me. There it is. And it plummets down. And what does it do? It goes to peak A, B, C, D. And there's the dreaded H pattern. Exactly what we talk about in the Chapman Wave methodology. Look at the red one. Same thing. A, B, C, D. Double top. Makes the cup formation. Look at that big cup formation. It's the same pattern that we look at here. Uh, let me go to uh, the... Uh, let me just find it. Uh, I think it's cha Chapter 22. I should know these by memory by now. Yeah. Chapter 22. That's one pattern. That's the drop bucket. Well, what about the right... Um, uh, right, right shoulder failure pattern, and that right shoulder failure pattern, which is on, I think, chapter 21, it must be, yeah, right shoulder, look at this, that pattern, where you fail on the right side, fail on the right side, hey, wait a minute, 
Don't I just see that here? There it is. There's both the cup formation, the drop bucket formation, the double top formation, and the right shoulder failure because it never made a new high. So that's one. That's that's initiation of foreclosures. And I remember seeing this chart sometime a couple of years ago, and I remember saying, gee, I wonder if this is going to turn out to be a D, and I forgot about it. It was the first time I remember I recall seeing it. Hey, wait a minute. I showed this to subscribers the other day. Land and ocean temperature changes from 1850. Well, um, if you look at this one, it goes peak A, B, C, D. I didn't actually put that in. Let's go to the one that started back in the early 1900s. It goes A minus, starts again. It goes A, B, C, D, E, F. Wait a minute. Peak F is where you get your strongest declines many times. Whoosh. Uh, this is uh, this is one of um, Larry and Tom's A to B equals C to D. A to B equals C to D. Plop starts a brand new buy mode. Goes A minus, comes back down with a higher low. So it starts A B C D E F. Should have put the down arrow. I didn't have a chart that put the down arrow anyway. Down arrow, and then it goes A B C D E, and we have made a peak F. And this was I I was talking about some time ago in the monthly chart of the. Uh, back in 2002, I think it was, National Geographic. I wonder if I've got the magazine somewhere here. I must try to find it. I said in the 200-year charts, if I'm correct in looking at this, I think we've made a peak F. Now, someone remind me, wasn't there a period back in 1980s? I think it was the 1980s. I remember seeing report after report about global icing. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't global warming. I'm saying absolutely there's, doesn't that chart look like global warming? What I am saying is that all of this information that we're getting now is exactly, Al Gore gets a Nobel Prize, gets a prize, major prize for something. Isn't this exactly the type of thing that you would find at major market tops? Well, you know what? I don't think we're going to be, some of us won't be around to find out if, in fact, we've started decline in the global warming. And hopefully we're doing something about it with the Prius and all these other cars and everything about it. I don't care as long as we resolve things that might be problems. That's fine. I'm just looking at the charts. Now let's quickly go back to the chart and say that the Dow and the NYA, dollar NYA, and then we're going to go to our callers. And then I hope we get to all your call, your questions, emails, and text in the den. I'll look at all those things. The the New York Stock Exchange is lagging as well. So unless the NYA has a f superb rally in the next two weeks, punching right into the high 9800s, it might fail. But the wave count that I've got in the weekly is unlike the others. I'm going to have to call that an, an A to B to C. I'm going to have to call that almost, almost like an instant restart with A to B, C to now. I, yeah, I can still do that. I have alternate counts. I'm going to let that uptrend line. And I think the NYA is the one that comes on really strong going into 2014. We've got our callers online. We've got, hey, Rich in Orlando. Hi, Rich. What did you want to look at? Whoops. XLE. Oh, God. I'll look, at, I'll look at the. As soon as we get back, we'll look at the XLE. I'll be right back with Rich in Orlando. Right, thank you. Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com. 
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. This is the uh, October 2nd edition. Dow's down 81, S&P's down 667. Not bad action. Still weak, but not bad action. Good comeback from the earlier 120-something uh, points down in the Dow. Uh, S&P, in fact, today is still a little bit better than the Dow. Dow's weaker than the S&P. Very interesting how that's happened. Uh, the IWM is, is the leader. Q's are next. I'll do the Q's in a little while. But let's go back to Rich and Orlando. So, Rich, so the ERY, which is, you, which is what you are still long, um, is trading at, and that's the 300% uh, um, energy bear shares. It's trading at 2507, holding the nine period exponential moving average. MACD is at 68%. It's, it's, it's holding well. Sorry, the MACD is good. The stochastic is at 68%. Always jump ahead there. But it's that weekly chart that is seeing rising prices, um, a rising MACD, stochastic kind of sitting there is a nice positive divergence between the stochastic in the weekly chart, monthly chart, and the ERY is terrible because all all the ETFs have all come from their highs to the to not their lows, but have had major pullbacks because they get readjusted every single day. Now, let's do this. I want to just look at the XLE. So okay. the XLE has made a peak A, what I call a gray A, because it's uh, there's no sign yet that there's a buy signal to a buy mode. Moment it goes to a buy mode, I will change the color. Meantime, I'm calling it a gray A. And it's nice action. But I tell you what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the weekly chart, and I still have to think that no matter how I count it, I've got, I've got a peak C. 
and there should be a D. It doesn't tell you how long this can last, but it does say for a peak C to go to a D, it, it would be unusual to break underneath 79.83, um, and it's at 83.37, so it's about 84 points. So at this particular point, I have to say, based on the monthly chart, remember I was looking at the XLE monthly, and I said, while it's, I, I can call it a leg F, I, I don't have any sign other than it's getting quicker and quicker, to the to the to the peaks and less and less upside momentum and that tells me that it's starting to fail and the stochastic isn't confirming the rally because it's at 86 percent but way lower than it was previously so this is what i'm thinking so you still have your your uh, ery correct 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 and i guess my concern is that while the underlying stocks were kind of weak today it doesn't seem like the ery is responding what i would have expected i would have expected it to kind of break up, break to the upside. You would have thought that leg, oh. I would have, I agree, I would have thought that leg C at 25.97 would have started in the daily chart and said it's at 25.09. Now, I, let's right. tell you what I'm looking at here. I'm looking at Exxon and the, the, the candle that's forming right now, and I really, after two hours, I don't really like to talk about a daily candle because anything happen, can happen by the end of the day. Sure. But what right. I do want to do is to say, <clears throat> that because the stochastic's flattening out and the MACD hasn't, oh, it, it's opened up, but it hasn't gone that far down, there is a chance that Exxon can have a bounce in the next day or two, which would help the general market. That's if it's able to do that. But the 86.83, which is only a point away, that should be very strong resistance uh, in the daily chart. If I look at uh, Chevron CVX, <clears throat> Chevron is the same, not quite the same candle just yet, but it's trying its best to have a decent candle. 120-minute chart is trying to rally. I just want to look at the 120-minute chart. Yeah, yeah, you see, based on the 120-minute charts, it would have to be some kind of a news event that would really get these things to move. So I'm suspecting that the, that. Let me just look at COP, which COP, of course, is ConocoPhillips. That's been acting really well. That's closer to its all-time highs. The others are way off their highs. ConocoPhillips is acting very well, and it, it could have enough weight that it's, it's actually helping this particular index a lot. This is my recommendation. You're in, you're in, uh, just remind me, you're in, you're not in any uh, options. So I'm in the, I am in the ERY, right? I'm at 2550. I'm, I'm in the ERY. You're in, that's what I want to know. You're in the ERY. Now, right. I, I don't know what you feel comfortable with as a stop. My suspicion is that you'd be comfortable with a small stop, but not if there's a chance that tomorrow, for whatever reason, the XLE, the Energy Select uh, Spider, can pop up and then you gap down, and then you don't have any control over your stop. So, wow, this is a difficult thing for me to do, because everything about the chart that I'm looking at, the ERY, says that there should be a leg C to the upside above 2596, and that would get the stochastic up into the 80% um, area. It hasn't done it yet. So, you're in at 2550. What was your original stop going to be? Well, I usually try to use five percent. You know, five percent of the of the of the, of the entry price. So you are. So that would have been about a. That would have been around around twenty four. Twenty four. Well, I'm. You must think this through. This is. Let me just give you my thinking, and then you assess whether or not you want to use it. I think that if you hold your position, and you have a stop, of. The five percent that you were prepared to 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 risk, and that five percent let's put it just underneath twenty four eighty one which would be it'll be less than five percent actually just under twenty four eighty one the low of yesterday's candle in the e r y i think I think it gives you the opportunity to give give it a little bit of room and by Thursday afternoon you want to see it back at about twenty with if it doesn't take that out. You want to see the ear wide about 25.43, and by Friday or Monday, you want to see it making a new recovery high, 25.90, uh, 90, what did I just move the line? 25.99, yeah, or higher. That's the way I would look at it. I think that was your original plan. 
I don't see any reason why you shouldn't stick to the original plan, knowing that the weekly chart of the ERY is not very positive on price, but there has been a very strong movement in the MACD to the upside, and very often that can result in a very quick sudden move to the upside. That's my thinking. So take, take a moment. You don't have to rush. Think it through. If you're prepared to keep that 5% stop, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change from that. It would be the stop. You can always get back in. You can even buy it if it goes one penny above peak B at 25.97 because that should still go to a C and a D. So let's look at it that way. Let me know how it works out. But that's the way I'm thinking right now. Give it, what's, what did I say, about 25 cents or something like that. Whatever it is, yesterday's low. Or you could stick exactly to your 5% rule. Stay with your plan. I, I think it's the right plan. Let's see if that works out. Okay, Rich? I appreciate it. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you very much. Right My on. pleasure. Let's go to Alex in New York. Hi, Alex. How are you? Okay, Basil. Now, I know you keep trying to short the biotechs, but IBB yesterday closed at an all-time high. Now, uh, absolutely. I've been IBB for a couple of years, so I have a, a really big profit in it. And occasionally I'll do the BIB when there's a pullback in, in, in the The BIS. Not, no. That's the long. Like last November when there was a pullback in the biotechs, I did a trade using the two-time long, the BIB. I know you've done... You've oh, 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 do, oh, I see what you, Okay, yes, yes. I you've understand. been trying right. to do the, the BIS on the short side. Right. Like, do you always let your stop take you out of it? Yes. But, so you were taken out of it, I assume, yesterday when it, when no, it went down. What, what, yesterday, uh, what yesterday, I had a trading position, a very, very tight stop, a 30 cent stop on the trading position from the day before. That got taken out, but our original position is still in. And in fact, uh, if I can look at it, it usually trades and it's down just a little bit. But I'm. Uh, I'm I'm pretty strict. It's just a, a, like a one point stop now on this whole position. To me, that's that's reasonable. And let me explain what I'm looking at now. Now, folks, uh, I do timing as well as the waveform when I'm looking at C's, D's, and all that stuff. Getting a top. If you remember, I was just looking at the charts of um, uh, the global warming. That was one. But the chart that I was looking at that was in the Boston Globe on. Of course, you know, I always look at the charts. Do I remember what the chart is? I remember the pattern perfectly. Uh, on the Whatever it is, I'll find it in a minute. Um, w when I'm looking at that, there's a difference. And the difference is um, the pattern now has gone slightly higher than 212.50 was the high of the, uh, on the 19th of September. I meant to take it out. Yesterday, the high was 213.78 on the IBB, and it did it in a very quick, almost like Chapman Wave Cup and ladle breakout. However, the stochastic is an 80%, and it isn't higher than it was previously. In fact, it's quite a bit lower, and these MACD could deflect lower, and therefore, it was, I wanted to keep the stop as tight as possible, but I wanted to keep the position because if ever there was an opportunity for the IBB, and I, I, I've, I've been spoken, speaking about this for some time, the IBB, the iShares of the NASDAQ Biotech ETF, it's been one of, I don't have to tell Alex because he's had a fantastic move. It's just been on fire. It is one of the best ETFs, one of the best sectors in the whole market. And it is the sector that money managers, on every pullback, either they've missed it so they have to grab it, or they're in it and they want to add because fund managers add to good positions. My suspicion going through all the different charts is that there are fewer and fewer that are actually working right now. <clears throat> when this does turn down, and if I'm stopped out, I'm stopped out, because I'll tell you why. If I'm stopped out and there's a brand new uh, leg up tomorrow, if this is a peak, I don't think this will be a G. It will be a C, and they'll say we can go even higher. I won't, won't touch it for a little bit until I get another sign. Then there's this huge uptrend resistance area that goes to 
around about 216 to 217. It depends. It's a weekly chart. But going this week is 216. Next week is 217. So, and, and the weekly chart of the MACD and Stochastic are still very strong, as is the monthly. So, for me, this is part of what I like to do. I think my subscribers know that I'm. This is the strongest of the um, of the one of the strongest of the sectors in the entire market. But I'm starting to see a breakdown in some of the stocks. So I'm treating it as a potential for a move that if at any point in the next three weeks, regardless of whether I, I'm in it as a short or not, if it cracks 205, it could be a real quick trip down to 203, the test of the nine period moving average, and then the 201 area. As suddenly it could be this... It could be the, the, the shutoff of the government. Maybe all of a sudden people get nervous that uh, certain, um, um, certain procedures in the government that would allow for uh, confirmation of, of, of uh, certain uh, innovative ideas don't get put through. It could be financial. I have no idea. I'm just saying, right at this moment, as we're speaking, this is about the best opportunity, if ever there was, for, the, for a five-point move as opposed to a one-point loss. That's kind of the way I'm looking at it. But I have to tell you something. This is what I would mentioned to people when I spoke last Wednesday at the talk I gave in Boston. I said, don't just jump in and, 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 and start selling. Let prices come down a little bit, and if you've been in for a long time, start to thin out just a little bit and treat that money as money that you would like to put back. One of the reasons is that the monthly chart has still not given a single signal to say that it is a major hat-trick top. All I'm looking for is just a sudden weekly sell-off that takes about three to four weeks and has a good percentage to the downside, deeper than has happened in a long time. So that's kind of my position. Now, yeah, as far as... Sometimes you talk about the 4 p.m. price, the closing price. Correct. Is there any significance to yesterday that it actually closed on its all-time high? Um, there is, and I just, I think I mentioned it in my newsletter this morning when I, I, I showed the IBB and I gave an analysis. And what I said was, it appeared to me, and I'm only an observer, I wasn't uh, one of the people doing any covering or anything yesterday. I was an observer in the sense that I was looking at it and said, so, well, I shouldn't say that because, in fact, the one position was stopped out. But what I'm looking at is... Yesterday's last half hour was exactly the kind of rumor that sparks incredible fear and short covering, and in fact some new buy. My suspicion, if I'm reading it correctly, and I, I won't know until 210 to 209 is hit on the IBB, is that yesterday's move was exactly the kind of right arm extension that I look at where there's a technical failure in the Magdean stochastic. Stochastic is rallying today, so I'm just saying it's lower than it was previously on the peak E high. So I will only know that if by the end of the day it breaks to a new high, that's different. But I think there was fear because I could see the number of points and the way many of the, the best of the um, NASDAQ, or not just the NASDAQ, but the biotechs closed yesterday to tell me that there was a real squeeze going on. So I hope that helps you. I have a trailing stop that never gets hit. All right, that's, that's the like best way to have it. Fantastic. Congratulations, Alex. Call me. All right. Are you ready to ride the next bull market wave? Catch the Chapman Wave. Using the Chapman Wave methodology, Basil's very comprehensive daily newsletter, The Opening Call, gives the short, intermediate, and long-term analysis for the key indexes. In his Trader's Corner, he gives a brief market summary and expectation for the day with possible trades, both long and short, which are reviewed daily. A position, subscribers sold recently for plus 42% on part and plus 64% on rest. And Hertz Global has a core position for six months. A current position, entered as a turnaround company, is trading over 100% of its entry point as a portion sold earlier for a plus 21% gain. Subscribers to the opening call see the Chapman Wave techniques demonstrated and explained daily to also educate investors. Now you can get a free two-week trial.
Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Have you subscribed to The Gold Report yet? On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.69% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. With the 600th weekly Gold Report issue fast approaching, Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this power Powerful newsletter first began, and right now you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting tfnn.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market makes its way back into positive territory after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial today by visiting tfnn.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Okay, let me run through these questions that I have. The first question was on SAN. <clears throat> Santander, what is it? Uh, Banco Santander, uh, SA, a Spanish bank, but it has a lot of... Uh, uh, yeah, they're, they're everywhere. They're Latin America, uh, Britain... Um, and uh, so they had a terrible decline, a terrible decline that came from SAN as a symbol is trading 8.46 up 15 cents. Went from right to 200 period moving average in the monthly at 2203, plummets down to 4.56 in March of 2009, runs up to uh, December of 2009, 1758. Then, of course, the whole Spanish uh, collapse, etc. Then what happens is 4.88 on July of 2012 becomes the low and it goes to A to B and now it's making a cup formation trying for C. Monthly charts is very nice action, much better if it can get to 8.80s to really establish a chance of hitting the 200 period moving average in the weekly in leg C or D up at 9.09 .09 and then test the, the high of 8.86 of um, January of 2000 of this year. Tough formation. Love the action. Technicals are confirming. Everything's good in the weekly. The daily is the one that looks a little bit toppy. It's in a leg. It made a peak G, and I don't know if this is going to be a repeat of that. It's unusual to go to a G, but that's what I count. And then it starts to move, goes to A, B, C, D, E, and now it's F slash B. 
it seems to me that between $8.46 and maybe $8.52, $8.55, there might be a pullback. $8.18 to $8.07 would be the area. I would not be surprised if there's just some kind of European you know, stuff going on with us and the Europeans to say there could be a pullback. I love the stock. If you're in it, stay in it. If you're not in it, start looking at it as a nibble to start a position between 807 and 780 if it if it drops to that level and then starts to get back to 818 that'll be very good action like it a lot so eur g PB, the Euro British pound currency pair. Um, just trying to get a little takeoff today. <clears throat> You've got that pattern that I call the, the double top pattern with a cup formation, right shoulder failure right there. That says if you break below uh, half, half the top and the, the cup bottom, you should test the bottom. If you test the bottom, be careful. You've got to look for major support. So now it's sitting on the 200 period exponential moving average. That says it's still in the downtrend. There's nothing here that I'm looking at that says it's in an uptrend. Um, but the way I would look, I don't know if you're long or you're short. Who's the questioner? Another day in paradise over in the den. I would do this. If you are long, you could start to nibble here, but it's only because it's trying to make a run at 0.8377 for the 8, hmm, well, for the 8460 200 period exponential moving average high, if you're in it, I actually would not mess around because if it takes out the low of of today and yesterday, 83317, double bottom low, if it takes that double bottom out and it closes under it, I don't really want a part of it. Now, I don't know what the percentage, I don't know what it is, what you're playing for pips, I don't know what, what they are, so I can't give you that. All I can say is, this is, a, this is a great question for Larry coming up straight after me. But at the same time, what I'm looking at is it's just the start of a position for a bounce. And that bounce is 8.456, the 9-period the, um, the period moving average support resistance in the, in the weekly chart. So I would say it's a nibble, but the main trend so far as I can see it is still down. So be very careful. Then I'm going to look at Aetna because it was questioned in the den about whether or not um, some of these healthcare insurance companies might be affected by Obamacare. Well, Aetna has made a peak F top in the weekly and peak E in the, in the monthly. If Aetna, AET, is trading at 64.84, if it breaks underneath 63.40, be careful, it's going to go quite a bit lower down, and that makes the weekly chart very vulnerable. So, as far as the Dow is concerned, 15,000, that is absolutely key. It has the Dow to hold 15,000. On the upside, there could be a bounce to 15,170s, but you're going to be... Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for.